Hi guys, welcome to today's video. So today we are going to decorate this sketchbook. This is a handbook sketchbook. So I will kind of show you the um, band that comes around it in a second. But this idea came from my last sketchbook flip through video. So I'll link that below and it was an A6 Sennelier uh, linen bound sketchbook. And then I just used some oil paints and oil sticks to um, add a few sort of color swatches on the front so you can see it here on the right and um, then I decided I wanted to do a video you know that would we could kind of explore this idea and use up some supplies that we have so you can see here on the left there are the uh, colors that I used on the little one and um, it was just a really fun kind of thing and a fun way to um, decorate the sketchbook and kind of um, possibly like commemorate some of the um, ideas or colors that you were using at the time or that were inspiring you so um, and you know just the starting or the finish of a sketchbook because it's pretty exciting sometimes it can be a little bit daunting starting a new one um, but is it, it is exciting finishing one off and um, I thought this would just be a really nice way to like um, finish off or you know start a new sketchbook so we are taking this completely blank one here today and this has as well a linen bound cover so you can see how much bigger this one is this is I think the grand portrait size um, okay and sorry if you can hear noises everywhere there's garages opening and vacuuming and cleaning and um, I just hadn't had a chance to get this done so I had a little bit of a kind of a mini operation on Monday so I have been a little bit behind um, under the weather this week so anyway um, let's see here um, so yeah so this is the uh, sketchbook that we're using and this one these ones also just came out with a watercolor version so this paper I, I don't mind at all it's not my favorite paper but I do you know I enjoy this sketchbook um, but they did come out with one with thicker paper as well which looks really nice so I'll link these below but um, um, I'm just kind of giving you a little kind of flip through here so this is a sketchbook that we use on the channel occasionally so um, this is for color spotlights and I haven't really done any in a while they take quite a lot of time to film so um, but they are really fun so there's probably another 12 or or so um, colors that I'd like to do so eventually we will get back to these and create some more of these but so I'm just kind of showing you here that it can be a new sketchbook you're starting it can be one that you have in your stash um, and there are some different uh, types of linen bound uh, sketchbooks and you could also do this on just a different sketchbook with a different surface you'll just have to kind of make sure does it need to be gessoed or um, something like that so I'll also show you at the end we'll do a little bit on the Jane Davenport one which is a linen one and some of these might also just be ideas that you want to do on pages of your sketchbook so we're going to go through and do like color wheels and tints and shades of colors um, color mixing and some roses so we're going to do cover quite a few things today and yeah hopefully these will be inspiration not only for the cover but also for pages inside your sketchbooks
So this is the Jane Davenport one and I think I used this one around 2019. Uh, and some of these pages here, I was inspired by Lara Gastinger's Perpetual Journal for Nature and I wanted to kind of create um, some pages of a perpetual journal in here just for the months. So it wasn't necessarily something from nature, but just that I could go back every month. So, you know, do something throughout the year and then go back the next year and do something on the page of January, something on the page of February to kind of see the different things I was um working on or interested in you know that year so I didn't end up going back and doing that but I did really enjoy that so just once a month I would have that page and I would be able to go in and just um, really enjoy and kind of look like just something that I'd wanted to work on and yeah it was really nice so and then this sketchbook there has been quite a lot of just color mixing pages so I get quite a lot of questions on you know how to grow and um, kind of understand color and color mixing and a lot of it is just you know putting that in your sketchbook making um, little notes of colors like just taking one color it might be like on the other page was indigo and then I was just mixing that with all my blues all my purples and things like that so here is what we're doing today so this is a kind of preliminary setup here i just did a little bit of practice on this old piece of um, paper that i already had things on but i just wanted to kind of um, put down some of these color swatches and try this paint out so um, yeah and i really highly highly recommend before you do anything on your um, cover to, to do a little practice run first so you can see here that I just put a little blob of the um, of one color on one side and I put a little blob of the other color on the other and then I just kind of mix them in the ratios there so just a little bit um, you know just a little bit from one side to more and more across so um, I just you know did those uh, and I'm kind of going to show you here so we're kind of taking this from mixing shades and tints with oils or with acrylics. It's a little bit different to do this in watercolor because we don't necessarily use white in this way. Um, so, but I can do a video on it. It is, you, you can still create tints with, um, with watercolor. I'll kind of, I'll um, see if I can link a video where I have done that before. But basically here, what we're doing is we have the ash rose on the left and then a pearl white. So I'm using pearl white instead of just regular white. And then I'm just taking a little bit of the color and then putting it in um, next to the pearl white, then putting a little bit more of the ash rose in the middle one so that they're about 50, 50. And then here, this one should be about 75% ash rose and 25% the pearl white. And that, that is how we create a really beautiful, um, ratio of tints across there or you know mix some tints and then um, you can see these are the colors here that I was mixing on the other one and then we're also going to use um, so I don't have a black here but we're going to use a dark gray and we're going to do the same thing so put that down you know lessen that across and then the ash rose here and we mix it in so Again, this one next to the ash rose will be about 75% ash rose, 25% uh, gray or black, 50-50 um, here, and then 25-75. So I, um, I often really like to use something other than black to create the shade. So I might use um, a hematite or a Van Dyke brown or a um, hematite violet um, or kind of violet earth type colors um, and I find that really nice as well so but yeah this is what we can do and you can do that for every single color and then um, we'll get into like using spiders and everything else but um, yeah what you want to do is just practice so before you um, start on your cover just get a scrap piece of paper try a few different things try a few different colors um, and I am inspired by this and I actually have some printables coming out with this emblem on it. So you'll be able to 
um, you know, trace this and use it. Um, hopefully they should be up to date as in my Etsy shop as well and available. Um, you can see here some of the printables. So I've been working on these really since January. So I have three different sets coming out and you can see that I, on these ones, I've put emblems and I've put something to paint so that we can practice both. And they're also very, very much rose inspired. So there's roses throughout, emblems throughout. Um, you can see here, um, so the front door is banging, but you can see, um, yeah, we'll go through all these projects and work on these and everything like that. But these uh, will be in the shop. So I've had to finish inking them and, you know, doing all the illustrator work and getting those all prepped. So um, I'm really excited to start all these different things. There's all kind of little different um, ways to show you how to do these. and um, But you can see here that I just, okay, um, I just... Uh, kind of painted one loosely there just to kind of try these different ideas and where I wanted to put everything on the pages. So I've cut everything out here so that I can kind of lay it all across the cover and you can see I've flattened out the book here so that I have, um, I can see the full uh, cover um, because I, I really want it to flow seamlessly and kind of be one continual cover but then I am also like considering and contemplating that the front will be you know it will be closed and you will just be seeing the front and so to try and make that um, its own sort of composition within the larger composition as well okay so and you can see here I even like the little uh, markings that were on the page before that um, are kind of there so I'm thinking about all those things how to kind of stain the paper um, how to I want to create like a color wheel um, sort of going off the edge and I'm also really want to um, use this this is the Mersini um, gold bronze by Schmincke it's probably my favorite oil paint so you can get this in the little bottle I'll try and link them both below you can get like a little bottle of it that you can just use with water for like watercolor um, but I really love this uh, oil paint version um, so let's see here I'm just going to start by sketching the emblem for, for the front and the other thing you can do here is um, you know I, on the back I do a color wheel so you can see here like if I don't like where the sketch is I'm just restarting it um, but I do a little small color wheel on the back which you could also do on the front cover you could do your initial um, you could do just a rose. You could do something else that is inspiring you. So you, you obviously don't have to do the exact things that I'm doing here. So the, um, the sketches that I do on video aren't as good as the ones, you know, I can do like when I'm actually looking at it. So it's a bit tricky and it's a little bit off like the, um, the ratios and everything, but it, it is in the um, printable so you can, you know, do it like a lot more polished than this. Um, but what was I going to say? Most of the video I will kind of just let you watch and paint along. Um, paint out your you know initial like not on the cover to start with just paint on some paper try the different techniques that I'm trying and um, I'll try and have the the um, printables up today but you can also leave like leave a little bit of room there if you know you want to put one of those emblems in there just leave a little bit of room for it and work around it with your other things um, 
yeah so uh, and then you can see here so I'm using these three colors for the emblem and acrylic is a little bit different painting in any other medium really is a little bit different to watercolor because in watercolor you have to paint from um, so you're leaving the, the the dark is going on last the shadows are going in last whereas in every other medium the shadows go in first and the lights go in the highlights go in last um, but in watercolor we have to preserve those and think about those right from the beginning so it's a little bit opposite I, I'd say that's one of the hardest things about watercolor is thinking backwards in that way um, so it's interesting for me to kind of um, try and use a different medium and now thinking that I can actually go in with the the shadows and blocking and put some of those dark colors in and those other layers in first so it's a bit of a challenge here but um, I really enjoy it and, and enjoy kind of thinking about it in this different way um, and trying it out here is really a fun way to try something with really not a lot of pressure I mean if it doesn't work out it's just a sketchbook cover you know there'll be another one so don't panic and you can also you know paint back over it or you know stick a um, stick an applique or a like a, 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 a patch or you know some embroidery or something else you could stick on there so it's not it's not a big deal so and I'm not sure if I mentioned in this video but these are just some Martha Stewart paints from Michaels there's something I've had for you know 10 years or something so they're not uh, I, I don't want you to go out and buy anything new just look for art supplies that you have in your stash and um, and really this this isn't it should be just a really fun and relaxing activity so I did this last week and I just sat down I think it might have been last Friday morning or something like that and I just or Saturday and I just sat down and just um, it actually took a few hours and I just sat there and really enjoyed kind of creating and thinking about these different mediums and how to do different things so I just want it to be uh, enjoyable for you don't stress about it and don't worry if things aren't perfect or if they're um, yeah if you're having a hard time because this should just be really something really fun and to just try new mediums so explore on your sketchbook cover so I will um, let you guys watch it and I will be back shortly bye
So one really nice thing to add on the spine there is a label. And so I've just again drawn that in with pencil and then I'm going to add some pearlescent white paint in the middle and some gold around the outside and then you can use that um, either just as a decorative element or to um, date the sketchbook or to name it with the th things that you're kind of using it for. Um, but yeah. Okay, so you can see here that I have finished kind of the basis of the, you know, what I wanted to put on the cover. 
And now I want to go back and add some splatters, add some splashes and um, sort of make it look more lived in. So it's a little bit too kind of polished at the minute. Um, so, and you can see that I did this on this one as well. So I'm getting a larger brush here that holds more water. This is the first watercolor brush I actually bought before I was even really um, painting. I saw it at Michael's on sale and I just really liked it. So um, yeah, so this one I just kind of use for projects like this. And so I'm just, I'm adding uh, paint and then if I need it, like if it wasn't splashing much, I added a little bit more water uh, just to get that paint moving. And so I kind of splash it on where I want. So I'm using the hematite here. So you can use, um, you know, a brown or a violet earth, something dark. And then you can see here I'm also putting some on just using my brush to create some random marks. And don't be afraid to do them close to the edges and going off the edges as well to make it look, um, it just gives it more of a um, organic look. And yeah, then um, just keep uh, dipping. You, you can go over them to make them darker, you know, as many times as you like. Um, and I think that's about it. So I hope that you enjoyed um, this video and I have another video coming out just to show you kind of what's going to be uploaded in the shop. And um, yeah, we, we will, I think next week we might do the um, catch up on some of the favorite mixes videos. There might only be one more. This might be the last one for the year. Um, I'm working on some things for the advent calendar this year so I'm hoping to film some of that before December because it gets a little bit um, bit of a rush in December so I'm hoping that I can film some of that uh, fairly soon but um, so here what I'm doing here is I'm using the lace from the other one and I'm just uh, drawing that in pencil and then I'm going to go over this just paint it on with a paintbrush with the Windsor and Newton gold ink. So this is a really good idea if you find a design that you like you can easily um, put that on with pencil and use the ink and it looks really really beautiful at the end so um, that's another really good tip. Um, okay it is it is bustling around here today we've got people coming and going so um, I will leave it here and um, have a really lovely weekend. Bye guys.